Welcome to my studio. I'm Carol Hall and today we're going to do a simple hack on how to easily transfer an image directly to your vessel and then we'll work on using colored pencils. Today we're going to talk about transferring images onto your wood, um, some easy ways to get that done and also a little bit about coloring. So a lot of um, people that I talk to are not artists. They don't feel comfortable drawing images themselves. Um, so this technique can be done with a drawing that you do, or you can go online and you can Google clip art. This, um, I Googled clip art hummingbird outline and found a really easy to use outline of a hummingbird that just is a line drawing that will be super simple for me to transfer and turn into uh, a hummingbird on my, on my vessel. So I always show these demos on flat wood that I've um, prepared. Um, this is maple. I always seal it, and my preferred sealer now is Chroma Crafts Clear Sealer. Um, I like the way it fills in the grain and um, prepares the wood to take any color. Um, and also the fact that it doesn't impart a yellow cast to the wood, which is a huge bonus round because if you're working on a piece of nice light maple or holly, you want to keep that nice white look. <clears throat> so I would cut out the image and I like to use glue dots. Um, sometimes these are also called zots. I buy them at Michael's. And what they are is a little adhesive dot used for scrapbooking. You can see that little dot. Some of you might be familiar with these in magazines. They're a little thing that they put perfume samples and things like that in magazines. And they're a really easy way to adhere your image to your wood. So you would put them wherever you think it's a good idea to give you a little more adhesion to the wood. I usually go for a corner, but if you have a big open space in the middle, it might be good to do that. For instance, there's the hummingbird's beak. Um, that's a long stripe, so I'm going to put one in the middle there and adhere that to my wooden piece. Now, some of you would say, what do you do if you're using a round piece, though? Most of you are working on nice vessels that have some three-dimensionality to it, and it's really hard to get a flat piece of paper to stick on a round vessel. So what I do is I crumple up the paper until it's really soft and suede. And what that does is it breaks down the fibers, and then when you want to adhere it, and you put it over this nice round vessel, it kind of submits to going more th in three dimensions and you can really easily transfer it that way. Now, I've done a whole lot of different techniques to transfer. Some people say put carbon paper between this and the wood, but then you gotta get all that carbon paper blue or black off at the end. Some people say um, use different chemicals to transfer this toner by flipping it upside down. But again, then you got to get the toner off. I like to just burn right onto the wood. Um, and there's a couple of bonus rounds to that. First, if you're using a wood that has a lot of grain, the paper actually acts as a buffer zone between you and all that grain so that your um, pyro pen will flow really evenly over it. And um, second, it's just so easy to transfer it because you're basically just going to follow your lines. Now remember, when you use your pen to use really good ventilation, so you don't have the smoke puffing in your, in your face all the time because that's not good for you. I'm really lucky my husband put a range hood directly over my work desk, so when I'm not videotaping, I turn that range hood on and it sucks all the smoke right up and outside. Um, I also use a air ionizer um, and that kind of keeps that char smell out of the studio. So you can see I'm just carefully with a moderately hot pyro pen tracing all these lines and what that's going to do is give me the drawing of this. Also when I color it it's going to kind of act as a, a place to keep the color inside the center so that it doesn't run all over the wood. Remember when you're using your pyro pen, you want to glide into your lines and glide out of your lines so you don't get dots at the start, dots at the end um, from clumping down into the wood. So you can see I'm getting that drawing pretty speedily put on. 
Now I'm going to go to the version that's already burned so you don't watch this whole process. Here's the one that I finished burning. You can see the paper's kind of coming up, so it was good that I put that dot there. And then you just pull the paper off. And you have your perfectly drawn little hummingbird that you traced. Some of the lines you might find um, you went a little rogue on, that's fine. I mean, it's your piece. It's not anyone's but yours. And um, when you're done burning anything, I think it's a really good idea to wipe it down with a little bit of alcohol to get the char off. I put alcohol in um, a 360 mist bottle, which I swear by, uh, because it gives a really nice... Um, blast of even mist and then um, my alcohol one is my black bottle my wet water one is my white water or is my white bottle you can learn more about wet water on some of my other demos um, and then after you've just wiped it down give it a little clean the um, clear sealer keeps all this char from getting in the cracks of the wood which is nice when you clean it off um, so that's pretty nice. And next talk about, uh, we'll talk about a coloring next. There are an awful lot of colored pencils on the market. Derwent Intense Pencils are my preferred brand. Uh, they bring a lot to the table. You can buy a 72 kit like this one where you get an awful lot of color choices. They don't have quite as many flesh tones as I would like them to have, and I'm in conversation with them now about whether or not um, that's something they're going to be adding. Um, but the bonus round about this line is I like a painterly effect on my vessels, and so I want to use, I started out using watercolor pencils, but I learned really quickly that watercolor pencils never stop moving. So every time you wet them, they keep moving all across your vessel. Um, with these Inktense pencils, the nice thing is that once you wet them down, the color sets. Um, sometimes it takes a second application of a thin mist of water, but then the color sets on the wood and you can layer one color over top of another, which is just awesome. This um, large kit is really a great investment. You get all these colors and um, you can buy it in a metal tin or in this really pretty wooden box. I, I like the wooden box because then everything's organized really nicely and you don't have layers to go through. I'm going to pick out just a few bright colors. One thing they do warn you about on this kit is sometimes the colors that they show at the end of the um, pencil is not exactly the color that, uh, that the, you'll get on the finished product. So I recommend that you play with them and kind of get used to the colors that you like. But this is a ruby-throated hummingbird, and it's going to be what I call a fantasy bird. I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking on the Internet to know that certain colors go in certain places. So um, a lot of people love pencils because we spend time with pencils and pens in our hand from the time that we're really little. Um, and it becomes really second nature for us to hold this and know how to do things with it. A brush is something that you really have to learn how to use. So you don't have to worry a lot about your technique on this because these pencils are so forgiving. We're just going to lay down color. I know that this hummingbird has a red throat. I know it has a lot of green on it. I'm always curious about the red and green combos not looking like holidays, Christmas holiday combos. But I think we'll have so much rainbow colors on this that you'll get a feeling for the fact that this is just a really bright little bird. Um, you can see I'm not taking a lot of time being really specific about laying this down because these pencils are gonna, um, when I bloom them with a little water, do a lot of the work for me. Um, I'm just trying to keep it symmetrical so that I have a color story that will be interesting in the end. Um, as I said, that um, burn marks will kind of leave you borders so that the paint doesn't want to go outside those borders. But you can always pick up the paint that you're not happy with by using a paintbrush. And because you've sealed this, 
the wood will be really forgiving and not necessarily suck up that paint so quickly. So you can see I've just dashed a little color here and there to make a color story for this bird. Now I have this 360 mister, which you buy at Sally Beauty Supply. It's got wet water in it, which is water that I prepared with just a little drop of Dawn dishwashing liquid. So that's going to release the surface tension. And I'm just going to miss this. And you can see how these colors just bloom so beautifully. And you really quickly get a color story on this bird that didn't take any effort at all. You can take a little brush and soften some edges if you want, or get rid of some of that drawn look and really loosen it up so it looks really watery. But what I would do is I would get the water on this and then I would quickly move it to um, my heat lamp where I would uh, basically make the water dry and that would seal this bird in. And then I would get involved in what is not the bird in creating an image around it. I hope you have a great time experimenting with those techniques. And don't forget to share them to my Facebook or directly to my email. And remember, all you have to do is do it.